Hi. Yeah, it works. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Yong Shen Gong. I'm working for 99 Cloud in China. Hello. Good afternoon, Austin. So my name is Vish Jaraman. I work for Brocade Communications. So today, we are here to talk about uh, enhanced platform-aware deployment of VMs using uh, Tacker. So at the end of the presentation, hopefully would have left you the impression that Tacker and Tosca templates is all you need to simplify your lives to deploy VNFs, high-performance VNFs. So uh, I know the trend is now actually um, virtualization and of course trying to actually virtualize network services. So there's a shift away from using uh, dedicated proprietary hardware for network services and are moving into the COTS platform wherein a similar, uh, a, a similar performance that you can actually get from a dedicated proprietary hardware, you can actually get in the COTS uh, platform as well and how you can actually use Tacker and Task Car templates to specify these requirements and leverage them to actually deploy your high performed VNFs is going to be the main talk of this session. So here, what is the agenda that we have? Um, Yong Cheng is going to talk uh, briefly about Tacker and NFV overview. I'm going to talk about some of the features that are available today in a COTS hardware that can give you some very similar performance of that of a physical uh, proprietary network function hardware. And this is not just efficient, you also have to actually do some uh, uh, setup behind the scenes at the BIOS level, at the OS hypervisor level, and at the Vim level. In this case, OpenStack, uh, there are some setups that needs to be done by an admin before your compute node becomes ready for Tacker to deploy VNFs. So that is something that uh, Gong Sheng will actually walk through in some detail. And then I'm going to show you how life becomes very easy using task card templates and Tacker to deploy your performance, uh, high performance requirement uh, VNFs, followed by a demo. So take it away, Yong Sheng. Yeah. And I think before we talk about the tackle, uh, let me introduce, introduce the ESTI's AMV reference architecture framework. Okay, on the right of the picture, it is the metal part. The metal part comprises three parts. On the top is the MV orchestrator. MV orchestrator is responsible to manage and control the uh, MV resources. And then is the VNF managers. VNF managers, to, uh, which, is to, which is used to manage the life cycle of the VNFs. And then about, at, the at the bottom, it is the VIM. And, uh, and on, the, on the left, it is uh, the external features. This reference architecture framework also defines some interactions between internal systems and the metal parts. What is Tackle? Uh, tackle, is, tackle is metal. It's compatible with the MV uh, reference architecture. Uh, in Tackle, there are three, three models that's corresponding to the three parts of this one. At the bottom is the OpenStack, OpenStack MVI. We can easily resist the OpenStack environment into the, into the tackle metal environment. And on top, on top of it, it is our task template that is to describe our VNFS. And, uh, and we will introduce the uh, VNFFG in the, M, in the MV orchestrator to implement the SFC-like features. Okay, Tiger Projects is, uh, is one of the official OpenStack projects. And they, uh, it has its own, core, uh, its own core teams, PTL, and the core members. And the Tech Project currently is not very big. Maybe there are some 30,000 uh, 30, live codes. And uh, we, we also have unit and the function testers that is running in OpenStack CIC terms. Tech's release is under the OpenStack release management systems. So, uh, 
uh, if uh, so the mm, Bitaco release have our tackle uh, packages. So tackles focuses on NFV. So NFV offers uh, new ways to design and deploy and manage networking services. Now one of the main points of NFV is to decouple the networking functions from pro proprietary uh, hardware appliances. And, and uh, move these network functions to the common, uh, to the commercial off-the-shelf hardware and, and uh, via the virtualization. But if we run the uh, network, show, uh, net network function or, uh, over the virtualization, there are some, um, there are some uh, technologies to consider to improve the uh, virtual network function's performance. So that's which to introduce us some concepts to, to improve the virtual network functions. Yeah. Um, there are some features out there in this commercial off-the-shelf hardware, and also there are some hypervisor and OS features that can actually be deliver, that can be leveraged to provide near line performance that you can actually get uh, from dedicated hardware. So uh, I'll walk through some of them. You might, you might be familiar with some of this, but uh, just to give you guys an overview, um, I will actually walk you through some of these things. Um, so most of you must have heard about uh, NUMA, Topol some of the things that at least uh, that NOVA has already implemented and TACR leverages uh, uh, from the OpenStack BIM through NOVA and also from Neutron uh, that you might be familiar with are uh, NUMA topology, CPU pinning, uh, SRIOV, and huge pages. So these features can actually give that sense of a dedicated resource that you would actually get from a physical, proprietary dedicated uh, physical network function. So these are now available in the common x86 architectures that are available commercially off, off the shelf as commodity hardware. Uh, so let me actually walk through, give a brief overview of some of these uh, features. Um, this is to just remind, if, if you guys are already familiar, uh, I mean, I want to just give an overview for the, uh, for the benefit of others. So you must be aware of uh, that you know, most of the servers today come with multiple uh, physical CPUs with each of them having multiple cores. And then the way the memory and the I.O. devices are placed, uh, some, uh, the, these devices are actually placed, memory and I.O. devices are placed close to some of these physical CPUs. So which, that means they form something called as a node, NUMA node. So the more closer, uh, to a certain physical uh, CPU, a memory, and uh, I.O. devices are, the access time to, uh, for memory or for the I.O. devices, it becomes lesser as compared to trying and accessing either memory or I.O. devices on a, another physical CPU. You have to go through some link, uh, inter-CPU link that d introduces some um, latencies and delays, so which is not something that you want in a high-performant uh, NFV workload. So that is what uh, NUMA is uh, in general, wherein you're having IO devices and your memory closer to a certain uh, uh, physical CPU, and you want to actually have your workloads or your memory access and IO access to be placed on those cores that are closer to those IO devices and memory. So what some of the papers are published is that, you know, it's in the order of about a one and a half times uh, if you were to try and access either memory or your I.O. devices on a NUMA node, which is or on a, or on a uh, memory or I.O. device that is closer to a different CPU. So if you are actually, you, you want these devices to be closer to the CPU where you are scheduling the process. So that's the key thing. And the order of, uh, the order is about 1.5 times um, more if you were to try and access it on a different NUMA node. This is just to illustrate that um, mainly initially we're working on memory, so the same thing applies also for uh, IO uh, devices as well. So you try to place your I.O. devices closer to your CPU, physical CPU, and you have your, that particular, your process that accesses that um, 
on a core that is close to the CPU is, gives you better performance and reduces your access latency. And those are very good for your NFV, high performance requirement workloads. Uh, so there's also a concept of, uh, uh, I think we covered most of this. There's also a concept of something called CPU pinning. So by default, usually either your hypervisor or your OS oversubscribes some of the CPU cores out there. So it'll keep scheduling and it'll keep bouncing some of the processes between these cores. And this is not something that is um, desirable for NFV high performance workloads. So you want your CPU assignment to be static and you want it dedicated. So just like how you have your physical uh, proprietary network functions, which has got dedicated resource, you will be able to do the same thing using some of the Scotch hardware, using this concept called CPU pinning, which requires some configurations uh, in the OS and hypervisor layer. So another one is huge pages. <coughs> this is the OS or the hypervisor layer. So most of you are probably aware that uh, today's uh, cards hardware actually come with huge amounts of memory, like 512 gig uh, to up to terabyte. And usually memory, the OS or the hypervisor chops it at like 4 KB sizes. And then it maintains a table mapping all this uh, multiple 4 KB sizes. Um, so this actually c causes some issue with some cache lookups. So there is actually a feature wherein it's a possible ahead of time that you are able to um, dedicate some memory pages, like up to like a gig. There are one gig pages available nowadays, and then you also have two MB huge pages available today. And most of your NFV workloads usually have requirements like you know uh, in the 16 gigs or 8 gigs uh, with some CPUs. So. It is possible that uh, using this huge page feature wherein memory is um, set aside ahead of time, you don't have any of this TLB, the, trans, uh, the, the TLB buffer look aside wherein you actually introduce latency to look up the memory and map them. So this can be done away with and can actually lend itself very well to the NFV workloads. Um, uh, on the other one, uh, I'm sure you guys um, are familiar with SRIOV, Single Root IO Virtualization, here where nowadays you have NIC devices wherein it can appear uh, as it, uh, to a PCI as multiple, a single port can actually appear as multiple ports to a PCI bus. That means you have a concept of physical function and virtual functions. That means a single port can actually present multiple virtual functions uh, to the whole, uh, the PCI bus, and then these can be used as ports and can be attached to a VM. So the idea here is that you are not going to be using the hypervisors, uh, any network layer switch, which can introduce latency. So you can do away with it by actually connecting this uh, virtual function that is presented by this SRIOV capable NICs to the VMs. That way the traffic from the VM, the <coughs> traffic from the VM passes directly to the physical port. And that this can actually help with uh, reduction in latency and as well as um, uh, uh, increased throughput. So, so these are some of the concepts I wanted to introduce. But before Tacker can use this, the admin has to go off and prep the system, the admin, so that the end user who is actually trying to deploy using Tacker, using the simple um, uh, uh, task templates, there are certain uh, configuration changes that needs to be done at the BIOS level, at the OS hypervisor level, and the, at the VIM level, in this case, OpenStack, to actually realize some of this. So Gong is actually going to walk through some of those. <coughs> yes, and uh, before we can use this, uh, this new technology to improve the performance of the VNFs, we have to set up, uh, set up the uh, sequence. Do some, uh, do some settings in BIOS and OpenStack components to prepare the uh, NVI sequence. Fit, okay, let's uh, look at the first uh, NUMA. And uh, to enable the NUMA, we, uh, first we have to uh, get into the BIOS sequence. 
Uh, this is my biosystems. Maybe different biosystems have different uh, configuration items. In, bi in my biosystems, it is not interleaving to set the node interleaving into disabled. We will enable the NUMA topology into the systems. After, re after rebooting the systems, we can log into the uh, Linux operating systems uh, by running the NUMA, uh, NUMA CTL uh, uh, command. We can show uh, uh, we can show that the open, uh, uh, operating systems is viewing the normal topologies, right? And uh, then it comes to the hyper threading, and uh, uh, there are some also, there, uh, there is also one configuration items in, in, in most systems. Let's get into the bio systems and find the configuration items. In, in my system, this is a logical processor. We can enable it or disable it to, to, to enable and dis, uh, disable the hyper threadings. Again, we can uh, log into the Linux operating system to, to verify that uh, uh, whether uh, the hyper threading is enabled or disabled. For SRLV, we also need to get into the bio systems and to set, to loc uh, locate our the uh, Ethernet adapter. And under Ethernet adapter, we, we will find one configuration items, such as virtualization mode. We just set it into the SRLV mode. And uh, after we enable it in the BIOS systems, uh, in the operating systems level, we also need, need to do more, more jobs. First one is to pass the, uh, pass, uh, pass the uh, color one uh, and not, uh, one more parameters such as uh, intro IO MMU set its own <laughs> and uh, and we also need to uh, to give the uh, network uh, drivers uh, more more parameters when it when it's loaded by the color systems <coughs> and we, uh, again we can we can uh, use the Linux Linux commander LSPCI to check whether whether there is uh, there are some um, virtual functions network is enabled. And uh, and uh, when we talk about CPU pin and uh, we need to enable it uh, in the in the in the kernel in the kernel command line. That means that uh, the Linux the Linux kernel schedule will not schedule schedule process onto this. Uh, onto this physical course, and, uh, uh, and 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 after that, the the Linux operating system, uh, uh, the the virtual, the virtual network functions uh, can run on these CPUs. That's uh, huge pages. To enable huge pages, we we also need to pass some parameters to the Linux kernel. And uh, also after that, we can uh, we can log uh, log into the Linux kernel system to check what 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 type of huge pages are setting and how many pages are, how many huge pages are defined. Okay, with the Linux BIOS and the Linux operating systems as set, we we need to set up the oper uh, uh, OpenStack components. First, first is it is a Norwalk schedule service. We, uh, we need to add add two more features into the normal, uh, into the Norwalk uh, schedule. One, first one is Numa topology feature. Numa topology feature will allow the Norwalk schedule to 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 know the uh, Numa uh, topology information from the Norwalk computers. And the PCI pass-through features will, will match the normal schedules to, to schedule uh, uh, requests based on the PCI, PCI devices information on the normal computer. And uh, on the normal computer systems, we, if we want to enable the huge pages, we need a, a, a new neighborhood. Uh, uh, the new versions should be later, uh, later than one joint pool. 1.2.16, and uh, and uh, we are, we also need to uh, modify the no, uh, the nova.com file to define uh, to uh, 
to use the to use or uh, to use this NUMA or VPO settings. The first parameter is the v VCPO pin set. This pin set should be should equal to the uh, color uh, color parameters that uh, that we have set before. And uh, we also we also should net the CPU allocation ratio to one and uh, to uh, and to invite the over committed CPU uh, allocation. And uh, the third one is P, uh, PCI pass through wire list. That is for SRV SRV allocations for the for a particular uh, uh, neutral network. Okay, let's come to the neutron part. And uh, to enable the uh, SRV settings, we, uh, we will uh, add one more mechanical driver into the neutron server. That is SRLV, NIC switch mechanical drivers. The NIC mechanical driver will set the SRV, SRV's uh, information onto neutron parts. And uh, we have to we have to know the uh, PCI vendor ID for SRLV card on our uh, the, uh, computer node, and uh, after that on the on the control node uh, for the neutron server ML2 plugin, we have to tell the uh, neutron servers which which PCI uh, which PCI uh, vendors are supported. And in Mitaka, we have to enable the SRV agent. Okay. Uh, on the computer node uh, that is running SRV agent, we have to we have to set the SR, uh, SRV NIC that the on this normal computer, the physical networkers, uh, physical physical network cards are used. So with this, we have prepared the uh, C chains and the uh, OpenStack. Yeah. yeah. And so now let's, uh, I'll walk you through how Tacker and Tosca makes it very trivial. I mean, of course, why shouldn't you be using Tacker and Tosca if actually, once you watch this, you'll actually feel that, man, this makes my life easy here. You have all these complex things, features out there. And uh, the next thing is you want to be able to use it, but you don't want it to make it as complex as the setup that you have here. You want to be able to express it in a way, these requirements that makes it easy for a user to be able to specify and have Tacker uh, deployed for you. So I'm going to walk through how simple or trivial some of these templates are in expressing this. Um, I hope you guys can see this. So one of the complex examples I picked is uh, I mean, not many would do this, but you probably want to actually have your NFV wherein you want to say that I want to actually have six vCPUs, and I want to actually have six gigs of memory, but two gigs on NUMA node zero, and four gigs on NUMA node one, and you want this kind of uh, requirement to be met. So with Tasca template that we have introduced, a new property, uh, our, uh, the, the Tackle team has actually been working very closely with the Tasca body to introduce some of this. Uh, with uh, Tacker being the experimental phase where we try this and actually push it through standards. And we have introduced this uh, concept called NFV Compute, <coughs> where you can provide properties. And uh, the situation as described, uh, wherein you want to actually have a non-uniform uh, uh, um, resource separation within the nodes can actually be, be specified here. You give it a, specify a node, and give it an ID, you say how many CPUs, you, I mean what CPUs you want placed on that node and what memory allocation you want. Do something very similar on the other node, you have specified this complex thing. Uh, in, in the task template, Tacker will take this VNFT, it gets uploaded and our VNFM will take care of actually meeting this requirements for you. So it's as trivial as this. So the next one for SRIOV, of course, you will actually have your, uh, when you prepare your interlay, you will have actually specified your SRIOV network, your compute nodes. The only thing you need to say is, I want an SRIOV type connection point, and the virtual link is of actually of this particular network name, which is a SRIOV network, and everything is done magically for you uh, by Tacker and uh, using uh, NOVA, Neutron, uh, orchestrating with that will get this for you done. So isn't it trivial? So NFE is no longer complex. 
deploying. Uh, you want to do dedicated CPUs? Uh, it's trivial again. Um, you're saying your CPU allocation, you want it definitely to be dedicated. And you don't need to go off, create flavors. You don't need to go create host aggregates or any of these things on Nova or create any flavors, like I said. So you specify, we will take care of parsing, Tackle will take care of this uh, requirement, make sure the underlay is set, and then your dedicated CPU is there, your NFV. Same thing for huge pages. Uh, so here in this particular case, I'm using a single example of saying we want a large, uh, uh, huge page, you can actually say specify 2 MB, 1 GB, any other uh, uh, dedicated, any other huge page size that is supported can be specified here. What happens if I didn't do the configuration? If you didn't do the configuration, so it will actually very similar to how Nova does it, it will find no valid host phone. You'll get an error back saying no valid host phone. So the underlay has to be prepped, like he walked through earlier. So an admin has to set that underlay. But maybe that wasn't mandatory. I mean, that's the best, best behavior you can get. But technically, you, should, you still should be able to deploy. You should still be able to deploy. Oh, OK. The question was, what if uh, some of the steps that Gong walked through in preparing the underlay for your uh, like huge pages, SRIOV, or for new topology, if it is not set, what would happen? So in this particular case, if you are requesting a huge page, huge page size of large, and there's not a compute host that has a huge page size, it'll say no valid host phone. But if you don't want those huge pages or any of these performance parameters, you can still go off and uh, deploy a regular VNF without any of the special requirements. It could, it could still go find a host and will place it there. So with that, uh, some of the templates that I walked through, let me, I have actually got a one minute demo for each of them to uh, show um, how you specify the template, how you use the VNF manager um, to actually deploy the template and actually have it realized uh, through Horizon. And we'll also go look at uh, how the KVM or the Versh utility, the dump, we do the dump XML to show that what you requested we got it um, in the uh, on the compute node. So let me share this video. So what you'll be seeing in this video is uh, showing a VNFD template, Tasca template, uh, where we are specifying we want a dedicated CPU. Uh, in this case, it's a two V CPU um, and. Uh, once it gets deployed, I'm using HTOP. It's a utility that tells you on your compute host how the processes are actually running. So I'm going to show that I have this template deployed, and it does go and take two CPUs, and it's dedicated. So that was the main thing I'm going to be showing here. So here's where you see those are the two where that gets deployed, 911. So there's no workload running. Now I'm actually going to go off and, uh, oh, in this year I'm showing the Verge dump XML to show that the two CPUs that libvirt sees, they are pinned. And next I'm actually going to go off and run a workload, a stress test, so that uh, those CPUs are actually um, running at full capacity. So if you see HTOP, the 9 and 11 CPUs, uh, numbers, they are actually loaded. So that was the CPU pinning. Next, I'm going to walk through uh, huge pages. Uh, one second. So when you actually log into a compute node, like Gong um, had shown earlier, Excuse, sorry about this. So 
So you can actually do a grep on the proc memo, mem info, and you'll see how many huge pages are used. In this case, there were 24, and they were not used. Now I'm actually showing how this can be specified in the template, VNB template. And once you deploy it, we will actually go back uh, to the compute node, look at the proc mem info, and you will see that uh, it has actually used up some huge pages. So you will see that uh, it's now 22. So two huge pages, because it's a two gig uh, RAM, has been used up. Now we are going to go into Versh and also see that uh, the huge pages are actually being associated with CPUs. The next one I'm going to do is the Numa topology demo, the one that was the complex one. Uh, Sorry about that. So this is the complex uh, new topology that we specified. And uh, we're going to actually see, uh, again, in the, once it gets created in lib, uh, I'll, I'll do a version dump XML of that instance. And it will actually deliver what you requested. So the key is in showing that this task are templates, authoring them, and specifying this performance requirements is very trivial. and. Have this uh, an attacker interpret this and be able to meet the performance requirement. So there you can actually see the new topology where the CPU sets and the memory are as <coughs> specified. The last one is the SRIOV. This is where we show uh, the, sorry. I'm gonna pull this. So we will see that in this particular case, the uh, PCI uh, device, um, the, the physical NIC that appears now with multiple virtual functions to the OS, one of the virtual function actually is consumed by, uh, as part of uh, creating this VNF. And when we do a neutron port show, on that particular port, you will see the associated physical, uh, the PCI device info being used. So again, the emphasis on all these demos is that uh, you can use task or templates. Some of these requirements can be uh, specified in a simple, easy to understand manner and have Tacker uh, work with the OpenStack frame to go off and realize this. So here I'm showing, uh, I was showing the IP address that I'm actually going and correlating and trying to figure out the corresponding a port, SRIOI port, you will see that it's got the PCI device information which I will be highlighted here. Yeah. That concludes the demo and the presentation.
So open to questions. If you can get to the mic, uh, that way it gets recorded. Yeah, so that definitely looked like a you know a, a bit of setup. I mean, is there are there are there efforts to try to simplify or automate that? I mean, or is it something that let's say the BIOS settings, for example, is it something you can actually automate as part dynamically of setting it up bef before you launch something? So is that something that Packer does? No. No, no. Is it yeah. possible? Is it simply? possible? Yeah. Yes. There are actually I know uh, there are companies like HP and Dell who actually sell servers. They have some utilities out there. They have their own out of band utilities. Okay, so it's not a standard. It's a proprietary. It's yeah, a, uh, it's something. I think they have those their utilities wherein you can prep the underlay. So, so, so how how does I mean obviously you showed some commands where you can like introspect to see things are set properly, right? Yeah. So, but but in in the work for for, for deploying a VNF, you know, um, do you need to do that in order to know actually that it's not going to fail, or or do you like mark your your host resource with these attributes based on some prior test, or how, how is that prearranged to know that as as Dan said that this will actually work? So usually the admin or the operator will have a sense of what kind of workloads are going to be deployed in this OpenStack instance. And he's going to go do the prep and marking, like you said, identifying which hosts. Either you can use things like host aggregates that is provided by Nova to mark them, or availability zones, or uh, they're going to have it there. And we, Tacker, will actually go create some of those. Uh, we'll take away some of the complexity and identify the hosts that has these features in conjunction with Nova and we'll deploy. Okay, so we would have to segregate and prearrange the, the, the configuration of the, the, the bare metal host with those features. Yeah, you can have a mix of it. You can have a mix of OS that are going to place some high performant VNFs with ordinary OS. Yeah. It, can be, it can be mixed up. Okay, thanks. As long as on the compute nodes, you do some of the underlay preparation that Gong actually went through. So I have two questions. One is with Tacker, uh, can you apply? these changes or, or the VNF enable, these enablements for VNF uh, across a pool of compute nodes, can you automate that process with Tacker? Which exact process are you talking so, about? In so case? setting up the parameters, the grub modifications, the reboots, the, you know, make sure the, the parameters have taken these are These are not Tacker uh, specific functions. Okay. So just to show an end to end, uh, uh, you know, a flow. Uh, we want to share the solution, or the you know, the end to end, what all has to be done, and how Tacker can at the end of it simplify. So Tacker itself will not actually do any of those things for you. I see. So uh, we might actually, as part of our documentation from t user documentation, we'll have this, and there are also other documentation also out there from okay. Nova and stuff. Okay. So Tacker itself will not do this. Tacker, okay. what it does is. Uh, uh, it is the one that actually goes off and orchestrates and figures out uh, the mapping. The VNF and places it. Okay. The second question is SRIOV and link aggregation protocols, uh, bonding. Have you had any experience with that? Do they work together? I, I don't have that experience. Unless yeah, you have I'm any? Not. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. okay. Thank you. Yeah. I think we have one more minute for a question, yeah. I believe. Can I ask one question? Sure. Okay, uh, just uh, I want to know your view because with SRIO there are certain limitations like live migration doesn't work. Uh, so, okay. Yeah. So how do you think uh, like this will be solved in future release or? I know that SRIOV, at least from what I've read, SRIOV as compared to PCI pass-through. PCI pass-through doesn't allow for live migration, mm -hmm. but SRIOV has that capability, but it might be a vendor specific thing probably could be. SROV, from what I have read or researched, uh, seems to have that, uh, you can add to it, uh, as the migration capability. Um, no, as SROV, it, it has a capability. Intel has also done, but within OpenStack, it is not so. Oh, within OpenStack. So that is, yeah, that is something if that happens at a NOVA level, okay. uh, I think we should not have any issues from Tacker yeah. to be able to leverage that. So. Okay. Second question. One thing is, of course, these parameters will help you for performance gain. But uh, like, what's your approach for benchmarking or testing these capability? Like, I don't think so. Rally and Tempest is good enough. Like, if I'm using Numa and and I'm getting better uh, CPU performance, and so I don't know. Maybe on your real experience, what do you guys use in um, your labs? So. 
I myself have not been part of any of this performance testing, but I know do know folks who have done that and have actually proved either on uh, VMware or on other uh, OSS that have done this. Uh, I, I need to go find, I mean, and see if I can share some of those links. But um, in my case, I have not done those, any of those. I'm relying on some published uh, reports wherein on standard systems, these have been uh, tested and been published. Yeah, exactly, because it's really complex. A performance on NUMA Node 0 is different from performance on NUMA Node 1. So, yeah. yeah, okay. Okay. Thanks. It's fair question, yeah. Okay, quick. <clears throat> uh, mine's more a question on future direction, right? So if you look at application templating, you know, we have heat and hot templates. Now for VNFs and Tacker, we have Tosco-based templates. Is there any effort cross-project to harmonize on one formatting to give the administrator a little more ease on deploying VNFs and, and applications the same, instead of learning two different templating languages? So from what I understand, I might not, uh, I mean, one of my uh, colleagues, uh, Sridhar, might be able to answer this better, but for Tasca seems to be the way for both application and also for workloads, uh, you know, including VNFs. That seems to be the standard, it seems like. So you're saying heat will change? Heat is specific to OpenStack, right? I mean, if you were to actually use a different, today the Vim that we are using is OpenStack. Let's say you were to actually have a heterogeneous Vim, you have a Vim, uh, 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 OpenStack, you have just standalone KVMs or VMwares. I think Tasca, Tasca is probably still the one standard thing that could help. Um, so I think we come to the end of our questions. <laughs> so that's what actually uh, I feel is the standard using Tasca, and it is very specific to uh, OpenStack at this point of time. That's the thing. Okay, so thank you. If we have any more off questions, we can actually have a discussion yeah. offline. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.